Well, we have some breaking news to report. O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. The former NFL great turned actor became notorious after being arrested for the double murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman in 1994. A California jury acquitted Simpson of murder charges the following year, but he was later found liable for their deaths in a civil suit. It was revealed in February that Simpson was undergoing treatment for prostate cancer. His family says that was the cause of his death. We'll have much more on this story throughout the day here on Fox 4 News and also online at fox4news.com. Mr. Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? I've done some things I've been proud of as an actor, and I think I'm a competent actor. As you can see, there are numerous highway patrol vehicles behind O.J. Simpson. I feel like I have a, a bullseye on my chest. O.J. Simpson's life was so dramatic, it seemed scripted by Hollywood itself. Football champ, actor. I'll take the back. NFL analyst and celebrity defendant in the trial of the century. O.J. Simpson surrendered to authorities and was charged with two counts of murder. We'll be on the air at every important point of the trial. It was such a tragic story. Nicole was so dear to my heart, and when these things come back up, it's like it was a minute ago. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, we the jury find the defendant not guilty of the crime of murder. That not guilty verdict was watched by an estimated 150 million viewers in the dawning era of court TV, making broadcast trials the new norm. I'm sure everyone will remember where they were the day O.J. Simpson became once again a free man. As for O.J.'s final years... My health is good. I mean, obviously I'm dealing with some issues. He spent them in Las Vegas, golfing and living off his NFL pension, which was an estimated $25,000 a month. He had reportedly been diagnosed with prostate cancer, but vehemently denied this rumor. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there. The least little thing is blown out of proportion uh, uh, in the media. What's it like being in handcuffs again? Before the courtroom drama, E.T. spent a lot of time with O.J. behind the scenes in Hollywood. Maybe you just had a preseason jitter. And I think we're topical. I think we're ahead of the game. First on the set of the HBO sports comedy First and Ten in 1989. A lot of people like to get an insight on what's really happening with some of these some of these teams, and we tend to show a little bit of what we feel uh, uh, is an everyday, I guess, working day uh, in the lives of football players and what happens around a football franchise. When I'm away at training camp, if that milkman hangs around here early in the morning, I want you to throw him the hell out of here. O.J.'s first primetime appearance was in 1968 on the detective show Dragnet. I got a question. Are the exams tough? Five years later, he appeared on the sitcom Here's Lucy. Fine. Well, have a good time. O.J. was also in movies, including The Towering Inferno. Hey, Bill, tune in the main utility room. And three films in the Naked Gun franchise. Relax, Frank, we got plenty of time. Just watch the news tonight. You know, there's so many things to worry about in the world. You can come and watch this film, and it's almost, in, in a sense, mindless humor. At the height of his fame, O.J. was also an incredibly popular spokesperson. In 1992, he was reportedly making $55,000 a month in endorsements. Most of that was from Hertz rental cars ads. I've been a team player my whole life, and I've uh, played or performed uh, for Hertz uh, longer than I have any football team I've ever been involved in. I've been 14 years now. OJ was everywhere. In the mid-80s, he was a commentator on Monday Night Football. Ratings are up. People seem to be enjoying the games, uh, and that's the only thing we can judge it by, so we're happy. It's funny because I'm just so excited. The former football great seemed to have it all. He married Nicole Brown in the backyard of his Rockingham estate in 1985. They met when she was working as a waitress at an L.A. nightclub. She was 18 and he was 30. I think Nicole, my wife, has brought some uh, stability into my life. I never thought I'd remarry, but here was a lady that came in and offered me all the things that I needed. I just want to say it was the happiest day of my life. It really was. And everybody said it would be, and it was. Well, I want to say that uh, <laughs> I know it's been, it's been great. I can't imagine it being better, but if the day is in the indication, I know it's going to be better. How can it be better? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Congratulations. Among the guests, Nicole's best friend, Kris Jenner, and her then-husband, Robert Kardashian, who would, of course, go on to defend O.J. for Nicole's murder 10 years later.
We're very proud of OJ. He's finally done it. We're very happy and we hope you guys are happy and healthy and have a nice, long, happy life together. Decades later, OJ denied rumors he was Khloe Kardashian's biological father. In 1992, OJ and Nicole divorced after seven years together. The following year, she made this terrifying call to 911. What kind of car is he in? He's in a white Bronco, but first of all, he broke the back door down to get in. Okay, just stay on the line. I don't want to stay on the line. He's going to beat the Wait a minute. In 1994, OJ was accused of murdering Nicole and her friend, Ron Goldman. He was briefly on the run, while 95 million Americans watched this low-speed Bronco chase on live TV. LAPD detective Tom Lang was trying to talk OJ into surrendering. Hey, it's going to be better tomorrow. Get rid of the gun. Too many people love you, man. Don't give it all up. Don't hurt everybody. Uh, I'm just going to leave. I'm just no, going to go in the cold. E.T. was with the trial's major players. Justice was denied. The verdict was correct. It's unprecedented. I mean, when we get out of our cars in the morning and, and just try to get into the building, it's amazing. I got to be with Nicole. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. I just can't do it on the freeway. The shocking murders got the Hollywood treatment more than 20 years later in the Emmy-winning limited series, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. These gloves are too small, too tight, they won't fit. What was it like for you to play O.J.? An emotional roller coaster, you know? I mean, I go through the psychosis of somebody contemplating suicide at one point. It's heavy, heavy stuff. Did you reach out at all to O.J.? Did no. you get to meet with him? No, you no. decided not to no, do that. Stay away from him. I'm playing him at his most flamboyant, mm -hmm. charismatic self, and I think this was at a time in his career where he was at a different uh, you know, state of mind. Sarah Paulson played lead prosecutor Marsha Clark. I was like wearing her perfume and watching her videos. And John Travolta was one of O.J.'s defense attorneys, Robert Shapiro. If you told me years ago that the highest critical acclaim I would have ever gotten was playing an older, eccentric lawyer, you know, I would say, really? David Schwimmer, who played Robert Kardashian, was just becoming famous when O.J.'s case was unfolding. I remember watching the trial uh, and um, and in fact, uh, on the set of Friends, occasionally, we, we would all gather to watch some of the trials. O.J. was acquitted in that trial, but in 1997, he lost a wrongful death civil suit brought by the Goldman and Brown families. He was ordered to pay more than $30 million, but reportedly only half a million was paid through the sale of assets and memorabilia. In 2007, another astonishing legal twist. Las Vegas Metro received a call of an armed robbery at a hotel in West Sahara. After a careful review, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department decided to effect the arrest of O.J. Simpson. Have faith, O.J. Finally, people are turning on him. I hope he spends time in jail. Um, he should have been in jail for all this time for murdering Ron. I stand before you today, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of it. O.J. was found guilty of 12 counts, including armed robbery and kidnapping. He served nine years in prison. I'm no danger to pull a gun on anybody. <laughs> O.J. stayed in Vegas after his release, moving to a gated country club. He described his life there as fine. As for the murders, O.J. said it was a topic he never wanted to talk about again. I only have one person I have to impress, and that's my Lord God, Jesus. You know, I have to live with the fact that uh, there are people out there that think I did this horrible thing, which I didn't. I realized that I'm not going to be able to change some opinions ever.